The lesson today is about relationships and rights and healthcare, um, particularly in the event of an epidemic. I promise you that I had this lesson planned way before any of this started. I had no way of knowing that we were going to be stuck at home because of a pandemic, but I think that it is worth looking at it. Anyway, especially I think that you'll see some parallels. <clears throat> when the AIDS epidemic swept across America, it really changed life. It changed relationships, um, especially for the LGBTQ community, but not just for the LGBTQ community. It did start within the a gay male community and the intravenous drug users, but then um, it spread. And as it spread, you saw mothers being afraid to breastfeed their children and people in general just having so much fear about it. So uh, the one plus is that we at least already know how coronavirus is spread, hence we're all inside because it will prevent us from spreading it, and that they're already working on a vaccine. There is no vaccine for AIDS. Um, and they do at least know how it's spread and that is how they're able to stop transmission. And there are some medications now that they can give to stop people from getting it that are in high risk communities. But when the AIDS epidemic first started, they just had no idea. So what I had initially had planned was for us to watch the fourth episode of When We Rise. I cannot seem to figure out a way to download it for you for free, but here's a little clip of it. Let's see if I can make this work. Make a child, Dion. I don't want to blame you if you wanted to stop. This is unlike anything we've ever seen. So that's, if you remember in the last episode, Dion was pregnant. Now she has a baby, but she's still working at the hospital. Polio, influenza, cholera, those are all deadly. The only difference here is it's affecting gay people. If straight people were dropping dead, the world would have redirected its resources right to us. We'd be swimming in volunteers. Instead, you and I are working double shifts because the hospital's understaffed and great patients are being sent here from everywhere. That pullback, that avoidance, that neglect, that's homophobia disguised as caution. And if it continues, you could call this a genocide. So no, I don't. And I want to point out that just like HIV and AIDS was originally being called, you know, the gay disease, it was like gay immunofficiency disease, um, Calling it that was wrong because it ultimately affected everybody. It's a blood disease. At the same time, I personally want to say that I think calling coronavirus the Chinese you know, virus is, is not okay either. All it does is spread fear, and that is not okay. I don't think it takes a saint to not participate in that. Men are dying in hallways in New York City. We can't let that happen here. We could build a San Francisco standard of care. I'm saying if it's a gay male issue, is it any surprise? Seriously, come on. I mean, they go out at night, they do tons of drugs, they drink all the time, and they have sex with strangers. Is it a shock that they catch something? It's not herpes, Dell. People are actually dying here. Yeah, well, women are dying of breast cancer. I don't see many gay men up in arms about that. Okay, right. okay let me just put it to you this way. Okay, go. If this thing turns out to be sexual, that means women are at risk as well. The invisible women, the housewives, the prostitutes, then of course there are the children. I just want to have a forum here so I can maybe quell the gay men's hysteria. Oh, oh, give me a break. Keep it down. I do not have definitive information on how grit is spread. So then... What is the city's prevention strategy? As soon as I have the appropriate data. At this point, I'm more interested in inappropriate data. This isn't a joke, people. No, it's not a joke. There's a thousand theories and a million rumors and absolutely no information. It's the lack of information that creates panic, Pat, not the other way around. Incomplete information does not help. There, either. she just said it. Incomplete information implies that you know something. What do you know? Yes, please stop talking in circles and answer our questions. Should we stop having sex? Yeah, I think that would be a good idea. Oh, wait, wait, do you have proof? Based on what? One at a time. What do you know? One at a time. What, is, what do you know? Just tell us. What do you know? Give it a rest, Raise your hands.
So that's just a little clip from the episode that we were going to watch. Um, you can either go ahead and watch the episode. I think it's on Hulu. I'm sorry I don't have Hulu. I have Netflix and Disney Plus and a bunch of other stuff, but I don't have Hulu right now. Um, but it's on Hulu. Or you can uh, watch it on YouTube for $2. Um, or if you don't want to watch it and you just don't feel like putting that amount of time into it or you don't have a way to watch it, you could also just read the textbook pages. Um, I photocopied those for you. They're in the packet. Um, or you, if you got the paper packet or if you want to read them online, I'm posting them online and they're linked to this PowerPoint as well, which I'm going to share. So you can go ahead and just read the textbook pages and then answer the textbook pages. Um, if you choose the textbook, then just answer some of the questions. There's some analyzing the text questions underneath the primary sources, some multiple perspectives ones. Uh, you don't have to answer all of them. Choose a few, really. The point is just I want you to like reflect on how life changed for people at that time and how they dealt with the epidemic. Uh, I don't really care how you do the writing reflection as long as you do it in some way. Um, I really think it's interesting that we're talking about, you know, this epidemic that swept their community and how it changed their lives. You know, they went from a time of, you know, gay liberation and like that they could have completely different lives to being afraid of each other. And it also increased a lot of homophobia and made people really hate gay people because they thought that they were the ones spreading AIDS, but it didn't just stay in gay people. Um, as women got it and then women gave birth to their kids, there were kids who got it. And one of the sources that's in the textbook is about the fact that they weren't letting children who were HIV positive attend school. So at least in this circumstance with coronavirus, none of you are attending school and you're all getting distance learning. Um, but imagine what it would be like to be, you know, the one kid who had it and not be allowed to attend school as a result of it. That would be so hard. And that was a reality for some people in the 80s and 90s until more information got out about it and they realized that it wasn't spread in the air the way that coronavirus or measles is. It wasn't spread on surfaces that someone could attend school and not infect anyone, that it was only spread through bodily fluids such as blood or breast milk. Um, so that, uh, yeah, it was a lot different.